Ahoy hoy, this is Michaela from Team Retro, where we like retro games and we like the devices that bring them to us. So I started working on a new build for my Retro Flag GPI case. Because my previous videos on how to set up these devices use Recall Box, and Recall Box is a phenomenal pick up and play operating system and it's still my favorite of the raspberry pi operating systems out there but i wanted to get a little bit more down and dirty with customization and in order to do that you need to use RetroPie. and RetroPie is an operating system that does allow for much more customization but it is a royal pain in the butt to set up especially on a device like the GPI case. Getting the proper scripts up and running as well as doing initial setup is just three times as hard as it is with Recall Box and I've been very turned off to using RetroPie in the past. But in order to get this build sorted out, I needed to attempt to set up RetroPie to get the themes and customization options that I want. And I'm really looking forward to showing you what this build looks like and how I set it up. But I feel that in order to do that, I first need to show you how to set up RetroPie on a GPI case. So this video will actually get you from zero to a properly configured RetroPie build. And in the next video, I'll show you the custom build I'm working on and how to set it up. And the directions here will work for both the GPI case and the GPI case 2. But you may need an Ethernet and USB dongle in order to navigate a GPI case 2 without Wi Fi. We got our work cut out for us, and this is not for the faint of heart, so let's dive in and let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is make sure we have Raspberry Pi Imager. So we're going to go to raspberrypi.com slash software and download and install the appropriate copy of Raspberry Pi Imager for your operating system. I'm using Windows, so I'm going to download the Windows version. And once it's downloaded and installed, let's go ahead and open it up. At this point, we should have our micro SD card plugged into our computer. Here's the one I'm using. It's actually a 32 gigabyte, and I bought a smaller file size on purpose because this build is going to have more of a curated ROM list. And you could see it's already formatted to FAT32, but it shouldn't matter what your SD card is set to because we're going to format it anyway but definitely make note of the drive letter. So let's go ahead and choose OS and we're going to go to emulation and game OS. We're gonna to go to RetroPie and pick the version of RetroPie that matches the Raspberry Pi that you are using. I'm doing this on a 02W so I'm going to pick that and I'm also going to pick the drive letter of my SD card. And then go ahead and click right. And when it asks you to commit, go ahead and commit. And this is going to take a long time to download and install. So you might wanna grab a cup of coffee, pick your beverage of choice, maybe grab a quick snack and use the bathroom if you need to, and then come on back when this is done. And when it's all done, it's actually going to automatically eject the SD card, but we actually need to plug that back in because we need to download the GPI case scripts from the Recall Box website. And once that downloads, we're going to actually right click and we're going to extract it to the downloads folder where we found it. And in that folder is another folder called GPI case patch. So we actually need to take that and we need to copy it over to the newly flashed SD card. And it's going to be titled boot. So just go ahead and drag the entire folder to the root of the boot drive. Now, if you're running a Raspberry Pi 01 or a Raspberry Pi CM4, you simply need to go into the folder once it's copied over and you need to double click the install patch dot bat. And for those two devices, that'll be it. You're all done. However, if you're running a Raspberry Pi 02 W, you actually need to follow a different step in order to get sound to work properly. 
And in that case, you're not going to double click the bat file. Instead, I'm going to direct you to this Reddit post where Slime1982 has come up with a fix to the configuration, which will fix the sound problem. So instead of double clicking the install patch.bat, we're actually going to go into the patch files and we're going to go to overlays and we're going to copy this dpi24.dtbo and we're going to go into the overlays folder in the boot drive and paste it in there. Go ahead and overwrite the original file. Now let's go back to the root of the SD card and we're going to open the config.txt file. And at the bottom of this file, we're actually going to copy and paste the text from this Reddit post. I'll leave this text in the video description as well. Now, if our device has Wi-Fi enabled, we need to configure that. So we're actually going back to the boot drive and we're going to create a new text document. We're going to go ahead and name it WPA underscore supplicant dot CONF and that's going to change it to a CONF file instead of a text file, but that's okay. That's what we want. Go ahead and click yes when it warns you that the file name is going to be changed. And then we're going to go ahead and open this in notepad and it's going to be blank. So we're going to have to copy and paste some more text in order to get our Wi-Fi configured. And I'll leave that text in the video description as well. And then once you've pasted that text into place, you're going to notice that SSID and PSK say your real Wi-Fi SSID and your real password. We're going to change that to whatever your Wi-Fi connection is, and you're going to put in whatever your Wi-Fi password is so that the RetroPie setup will automatically connect to Wi-Fi when it boots up. Then make sure you save the file and let's safely eject the SD card and let's put it into our device. And for the purposes of this video, I'm using the GPI case one, but you can also use this build on the GPI case two. Just make sure you download the appropriate version of RetroPie for a Raspberry Pi CM4. And moment of truth, let's connect this bad boy to power and let's turn it on and see what happens. And you could see here we're getting video out and RetroPie is doing its initial setup. There's a ton of running walls of text, which is very common with this operating system. But once you get through that, you should be on the emulation station main menu. And because we're starting this up for the first time, we're going to have to configure our controls. So go ahead and do this and make sure you set a hotkey. I usually use the select button. Next step is to install the safe shutdown scripts which is a royal pain in the neck i had to connect a bluetooth keyboard and then once i did that i hit f4 to exit to the command line but the default is for retropie to think that this is a uk keyboard so for me i had to change it to a us keyboard layout so I'm typing this command here in order to get into the keyboard configuration menu. I'll leave the command in the description, but if you typed it right, you should be in this menu and notice the keyboard layout is set to GB. We need to change this to US. So I'm gonna use the arrow keys as well as the letters on my Bluetooth keyboard to go ahead and fix that. And it's really hard to see on this small screen. So I'm just gonna go ahead and zoom in a little bit so you could see I set the keyboard layout to US. And then we're going to go ahead and hit FN and X to exit and it will ask you if you wanna save the modified buffer, you're gonna go ahead and click Y to save. And go ahead and click enter again if it says file name to write to confirm that you're saving it in the same place. And just because I'm paranoid, I ran the command a second time just to make sure that the keyboard layout was set to US. 
And sure enough, everything looks okay and we should be good to go for the next step. And just to make absolutely sure the keyboard layout changes, we're going to type sudo reboot to reboot the whole entire system. And this will ultimately put us back on the emulation station menu. So once we're here, we're going to reconnect our keyboard. You should not have to repair it a second time, or if you're using a USB keyboard, it should already be good to go. So let's go ahead and hit F4 again to get back into the command line. And you have to be connected to the internet for the next step, but this is just me verifying that the keyboard keys that I need to use are working and US layout is indeed all set. So now I'm going to go ahead and type in the command that's going to allow us to download the safe shutdown script straight from Retroflag's GitHub page. And it's another long command, so I guess the video description is going to be quite a lengthy one, but you are going to need to know this information in order to get this build running. But for now, I'm just going to go ahead and finish typing this out. Again, this does require you to be connected to the internet. And you'll know it worked properly when you start to see download progress signs as well as a whole bunch of text, which again is a RetroPie staple. So just go ahead and let this run and the system will reboot when it's all done. I'm going to go ahead and speed this footage up, but it is going to take a little bit of time. And you'll know the safe shutdown script works if you go to turn off the unit and you get a terminated line as well as the command line before everything shuts down. You may need to go into the battery compartment and flick the safe shutdown switch to on. Now in order to get our ROMs onto the device, we need to actually turn on SSH. So we're going to go into Raspberry config. And from there, we're going to go to interface options. And once we highlight interface options, we're going to press right and hit B in order to actually select it. Same thing with SSH, highlight, right, B. And then we're going to go to yes and click B again to turn SSH on. And then we're going to hit OK, hit right twice and finish and that will take us back into emulation station. And from there, we're going to use an SSH or FTP program like WinSCP, and we're going to connect wirelessly to the device. So here I'm going to create a new session, and under hostname, I'm going to put the IP address of the GPI case. You can go to the Wi-Fi option, in the RetroPie configuration menu in order to get the IP address. Under username, you're going to put Pi, and under password, you're going to put Raspberry. And then go ahead and click log in and click yes, and you'll be in the RetroPie's file system. So let's go ahead to RetroPie and ROMs. And like most emulation station front end systems, you'll have a folder structure where you can start putting your ROM files in. Now, obviously due to legality, I can't tell you where to get those, but you know Google is your friend in that regard. And this is where I'm going to leave you for this video. I wanted to get you from zero to hero with a RetroPie build on the GPI case or GPI case two and at least get you to a point where you can start playing games on it. And in my next video, I'm going to show you the customization options that using RetroPie opens up, and I'm gonna show you the build that I am currently working on, and I'm going to teach you how to get there.
But that'll do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any thoughts or questions, please leave them in the comments below. And feel free to continue the conversation on the Budget Aquaman Discord. Link to join will be in the description. Thanks again for watching, and if this video was helpful to you in any way, please be sure to like and subscribe. Until next time, bye for now, and don't stop believing.